Welcome to SVG TV News for Monday, November 25th, 2019. I am Yves Boins with the details. Data can be an effective tool in the detection and prevention of crime, and the RSVG Police Force's capacity will be boosted with the launch of Police Records Management Information System. The system is a key component of the United States Agency for International Development's Carry Secure project and was launched today at the Kittel's police station, which is one of two stations where it will be piloted here in SVG. The project will help to facilitate the change from a paper-based reporting system to a digital one, allowing investigators to capture real-time data on reported incidents. SVG joins six other countries in piloting the project. U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and the OECS, Linda Tagliatella, said today's launch was a big step for the RSVG police force and highlighted the importance of crime data. When transformed into intelligence, allows law enforcement and police policymakers to better understand the root causes of crime and violence and design responses that bring about greater effectiveness in policing. The system launched today will give police officers 21st century tools to tackle 21st century crime. It will transform the way the police do business on a daily basis by providing access to real-time disaggregated crime data and enhance intelligent gathering. It will provide officers with the ability to generate victim and offender profiling, which will assist with a faster police response and effective evidence-based decisions, for example, crime mapping. The digital crime information system will also enable officers to receive crime data within seconds by using a system-wide search. Currently, this process takes over a week. This will reduce the time required to provide senior police officials and ministry personnel with crime data for reporting and decision-making purposes. Police Commissioner Colin John welcomed the project, noting that the world is a global village and the RSVG police force must continue to equip itself to handle transnational crime. He said the Carry Secure project is another tool to help keep Vincentian safe. What is Carry Secure? This is the strengthening evidence-based decision-making for security in the Caribbean. This project was launched in 2016. The practical benefits to be derived from a project of this nature is that the police will be able to collect quantitative and qualitative data. This would assist us in effectively and efficiently fighting crime within St. Vincent and the Grenadines and within the Caribbean. And the fact that the world is a global village is not just a cliche, it is real and crimes that happen in other places in the world can significantly impact St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So hence, we do not have to just focus on fighting crimes in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but globally and transnationally. Also delivering remarks was Minister of National Security, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who said citizen security is of importance and welcomes the project. Nearly $2 million on the Regional Security Service. That's our contribution. We make a contribution of over a quarter million dollars to IMPACTS, the Implementation Agency for Crime and Security. We make a contribution in accordance with our size and resources, over $100,000 to Interpol, the International Police Organization. And of course, we have to provide money for the Association of Caribbean commissioners of police. Indeed, in the 2019 budget, the budget for this year, public order and safety, which includes uh, monies with the office of the DPP, and I omitted to mention the distinguished director of public prosecutions acting, Ms. McDowell, and the court system and so forth, we spend almost 72 million dollars approximately nine percent close to nine percent of our G of our recurrent spending the 
Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force has launched an investigation into the circumstances surrounding two separate shooting incidents over the weekend. A police report said that on Friday, November 22nd at about 11.48 p.m., three male victims, ages 23, 28 and 32, received gunshot wounds to their bodies. At the time of the shooting, the victims were at Heritage Square, Kingston, at a social event. The victims are reported to be in stable condition. The police said the motive for the shootings is not known. On Saturday, November 23rd, there was another shooting incident, this time on the Grenadine Island of Canawan. According to the police, at about 11.30 a.m. on Saturday, a 26-year-old was shot about his body and is said to be in stable condition. The motive for the shooting is also said to be unknown at this time. The police are seeking the assistance of persons with information relating to these and other crimes to contact any police station across SVG or the Assistant Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crime at telephone number 456-1339 or 457-1211 extension 217 or the Officer in Charge of CID, CRO or MCU at 456-1810 or 457-1211, extension 216-220, or the officer in charge of Grenadines Division at 458-8100. All information, they say, will be treated confidentially. The police are also reminding persons that it is an offense to carry a firearm without a permit and are encouraging persons who are in possession of firearms without a license to do so to hand them over to the authorities immediately or face prosecution. Bayabu will be getting a $1 million new early childhood center, which is expected to be completed in June 2020. Speaking at a groundbreaking ceremony last Friday, project manager with the Basic Needs Trust Fund, the BNTF, Dunstan Johnson, said the government continues to play a role in the development of education and considers the construction of the early childhood center as crucial to the educational foundation of the nation's children, especially those in Bible and surrounding areas. Practical indication of the government's commitment, or it's a demonstration of the government's commitment to the development of the education sector in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And they have done it at the secondary and the primary stage. Now, they're moving to the grassroots level. They're building the foundation there upwards. And not only was the government able to find the funds to build this, but also several years back, construction of similar centers was done in South Rivers, Greggs, Georgetown, Leyu, call a few names. Keenan. Keenan. Diamond. Diamonds. So you see what is being done. So folks, this is an auspicious occasion. We want to ensure that the people understand what is happening here. We want to tell you that the government is serious about the education of our children at the primary age. And this is a practical example of that. MP4 South Windward Frederick Stevenson welcomes the construction of the facility and encouraged residents to take care of the facility when it is completed. That comes September 2020, the children of the Bible preschool and other children who are coming to school for the first time as, as um, children from the early childhood center would be going into a brand new facility. I want to say to us that we have to, as usual, we have to take care of these facilities. I want the, the parents and the community as a whole to embrace this facility, to make it your own, and whatever you can to do to help to develop and advance it, please feel free to do so. Speak with the, 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 the head teacher of the, of the Bible Methodist School, speak to the community persons who would be involved, and tell them, because what we want to do is to see our children of Bible and the community and the surrounding areas be in a special place, a place so beautiful and nice 
that their educational advancement would be something of the highest level. Project consultant and designer Glenford Stewart highlighted some of the features the center will possess. Construct has been designed to accommodate approximately 40 students. It will have two classrooms. As we know, the facility is very modern and um, I think the students will be very happy, as well as the teachers and the parents. Now, it has all the modern facilities that you can think of. The washrooms, the bathrooms, etc. are to cater for small children. We also have the teachers who will have their own facilities. Uh, kitchen facilities, dining room facilities, resting areas for the students, play areas, internal and external will be provided. So it is a facility which you can find perhaps in areas of Brooklyn or California. Similar facilities we're providing the students with those and I'm sure that they will be very happy. With efforts being made to diversify the local economy and enhance the tourism product, there is a renewed focus on ecotourism to attract more tourists and develop the industry in a sustainable way. With lush mountains, nature trails, remote rivers and undeveloped beaches, SBG is an ideal ecotourist destination. The entity responsible for ensuring the island maintains its natural beauty is the National Parks, Rivers and Beaches Authority, which is engaged in ongoing work to upgrade some of these ecotourism sites to give visitors and locals the best experience. SVG TV's Barvin Oliver tells us more about the work program in this report. Tourism allows a traveler to become educated about the areas he or she is traveling to, about its physical landscape and its cultural characteristics. Importantly, ecotourism in many instances provided funding for further conservation and precious environmental resources, whilst boosting economic development. With some of the most diverse fauna and flora in the Caribbean, natural sites and clear running waters, SVG is well positioned to take advantage of the benefits of ecotourism in a sustainable way. One of the natural sites in SVG which is popular amongst visitors is at Wallabu, which provides a true island feeling. Many of the sites from time to time require restorative work and superintendent of rivers, beaches and recreational sites with the National Parks, Rivers and Beaches Authority Rodi Katanis explained the work being done at the Walilubu site to maintain its natural beauty. Recently um, we have done work on making the building look more appealing. We've done some repainting as well as looking at issues of visitor safety. So we have done work on improving the walkway, uh, making sure that they're clear as well as making sure that the areas where visitors have to go in terms of um, footpaths, that those are in a condition where they can easily access them and use them in a manner that would not cause um, any injury to those on site. Well, it is. It's one of the most visited sites on the leeward side, apart from that view. Falls, a lot of visitors would come here because it's close to Kingstown and the aspect of having water and nature all in one that makes also there's a bit of heritage the culture so they get a feel of St. Vincent from just coming to one site so a lot of persons like to come here because of those things. Tanner said there are also plans for expansion which will involve assisting local community groups to create sustainable livelihoods at the site. And something important that most persons may not be aware of is that we are working with community groups to manage some of our sites as we have co-management entities and therefore we would encourage the community groups to use the opportunity and use the site as the base where they can look for other services for example having local produce having local food i know in the case of wally labu they are looking at doing a garden a local garden where visitors can come and sample different things that are natural to St. Vincent, whether it be herbs, um, they can sample these in a variety of ways, see what they actually look like, maybe try tea from them, try different um, byproducts of, of these herbs and so forth. So I know 
For Wally Labo in particular, they're looking at expanding the service and the experience offered at the site, and this is something that we welcome across sites. Not too far away from Wally Labo is the site at the Petroglyph at Liu. Tanner said restorative work is also taking place at this site. At Leiu, we are planning to do additional enhancement work on this site because we realize that there are some things based on the feedback that we have been getting from visitors that we can do to make their experience here better. For example, on the government capital project, we would be looking to deal with some structural issues that we have. Also add to the walkway and the visitor safety because we know that some of the footpaths are not in best condition given that we've been in existence since 2009. Over time, things tend to wear and tear and deteriorate due to weather. But we're looking at restoring those as well as um, dealing with some other structural issues that we have on um, on site as well. Over 90,000 foreigners and 80,000 locals visited these recreational sites last year and it is hoped that more persons will make use of the facilities available and continue to embrace ecotourism. For s tvs Evening News, I am Bob and Oliver. SVG now has a national wear for male and female as well as a national cultural wear. The national wares were unveiled at a cocktail ceremony held at the official residence of the Prime Minister Friday evening. Larissa Pogzikir tells us more in this report. The design for national wear female was worn by Jeremy Payne while Sophia Blucher won with her design for the male national wear. There was also a national costume for male and female and that was worn by designer Debbie Baba. The three finalists in the national wear competition coordinated by Invest SVG unveiled their designs at a ceremony hosted at the official residence of the Prime Minister on Friday evening. Member of the National Wear Selection Committee René Batiste explained that the idea of a national wear must reflect SVG's history and heritage. It had to echo the long history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, certain aspects of it, where you would remember your roots, your ancestral roots, the meaning of every piece of garment, why it is worn, what sort of environment, and the people that wear it. You see, we have to take into account as well that you would celebrate the nation as a whole. But he said she is pleased with the designers who made it to the finals as they met the criteria of the National Wear Selection Committee. I was simply overwhelmed. My fellow committee members, when we sat at our final deliberations, that we all spoke in unison when these designs were chosen. When the first one came up and we saw it, we all said together, we didn't plan this, we hadn't seen each other before we have in those meetings, yes, this is it. And what was remarkable is that the designers, having read the brief, also were able, in their presentations, the drawings, they were able to write out the text and say, why are they doing a particular cut? Why are they using a particular material? Why did they choose particular colors and the blend and what it means to St. Vincent and the Grenadines? That when you look at aspects of this design, you must be able to say, yes, this is from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture and Minister of Finance were expected to deliver remarks. However, they were unable to attend. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez spoke on their behalf and praised Invest SVG for the initiative. He said that a national wear becomes final when people truly accept it nationally. Clearly, for the national wear to become broadly accepted, because those who have designed and those who have approved designs and those who seek to advance the national wear, it will truly become national when it becomes accepted, when there is among the people as a whole a settled conviction that this is what we ought to have. PM Gonzalez reminded the gathering that like everything in life, nothing remains the same, suggesting changes to the national wear as time goes by. 
a national, national way by its very nature is not static. You will have a specific form, but I'm sure that there would be variations as time goes by. I look forward with great interest to see how the people of our country, at home and abroad, embrace what is offered this evening and what is proclaimed and affirmed as the national dress, the national wear. At Friday's ceremony, no mention was made of how many designers entered the competition. The unveiling of the national wear as their final selection were initially expected to be unveiled at the Everything Vinci Expo last month. However, this did not materialize. For SVG TV News, Larissa Fox Dickhead. Design for National Wear Female was won by Jeremy Payne, while Sophia Blucher won with her design for the Male National Wear. There was also a national costume for male and female, and that was won by designer Debbie Baba. The three finalists in the National Wear competition, coordinated by Invest SVG, unveiled their designs at a ceremony hosted at the official residence of the Prime Minister on Friday evening. Member of the National Wear Selection Committee, Rene Batiste, explained that the idea of a national wear must reflect SVG's history and heritage. It had to echo the long history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, certain aspects of it, where you would remember your roots, your ancestral roots, the meaning of every piece of garment, why it is worn, what sort of environment, and the people that wear it. You see, we have to take into account as well that you would celebrate the nation as a whole. But he said she is pleased with the designers who made it to the finals as they met the criteria of the National Wear Selection Committee. I was simply overwhelmed. My fellow committee members, when we sat at our final deliberations, that we all spoke in unison when these designs were chosen. When the first one came up and we saw it, we all said together, we didn't plan this, we hadn't seen each other before we have in those meetings, yes, this is it. And what was remarkable is that the designers, having read the brief, also were able, in their presentations, the drawings, they were able to write out the text and say, why are they doing a particular cut? Why are they using a particular material? Why did they choose particular colors? And the blend and what it means to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, that when you look at aspects of this design, you must be able to say, yes, this is from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture and Minister of Finance were expected to deliver remarks. However, they were unable to attend. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez spoke on their behalf and praised Invest SVG for the initiative. He said that a national wear becomes final when people truly accept it nationally. Clearly, for the national wear to become broadly accepted, because those who have designed and those who have approved designs and those who seek to advance the national wear, it will truly become national when it becomes accepted, when there is among the people as a whole a settled conviction that this is what we ought to have. PM Gonzalez reminded the gathering that like everything in life, nothing remains the same, suggesting changes to the national wear as time goes by. The national, national wear by its very nature is not static. You will have a specific form, but I'm sure that there would be variations as time goes by. I look forward with great interest to see how the people of our country, at home and abroad, embrace what is offered this evening and what is proclaimed and affirmed as the national dress, 
the national wear. At Friday's ceremony, no mention was made of how many designers entered the competition. The unveiling of the national wear final selection were initially expected to be unveiled at the Everything Vinci Expo last month. However, this did not materialize. For SVG TV News, Larissa Fox Dickey. Since the unveiling of the national wear on Friday evening, there have been heavy criticisms about the selection of female national wear, particularly on social media with some persons referencing the design to what the housemaids wore during the time of slavery. In an interview with SVG TV News Today, designer Jeremy Payne of Fashion is Payne defended his design which he said had to meet certain standards and criteria set out by the National Wear Selection Committee and that much thought and research went into his design which could be customized by Vincentians. Looking at paintings by this artist Agostino Brunei and in the 19th century uh, he did a lot of paintings of the West Indies um, and so the silhouette that we worked with uh, for this dress is inspired by 19th century dress and um, we chose to use white because it's um, a reflection of our of St. Vincent having this history of uh, harvesting and producing cotton and Sea Island cotton. It was one of the, the most sorted out uh, cottons uh, from the Caribbean and so I wanted to pay homage to that uh, and I think that's really what, uh, what I wanted to do as a national wear because Vincentians love to customize and have something that no one else has and I think um, for me to do it in white and do it with a very clean uh, silhouette is, is, is you know, I, I feel like I hit the nail on the head. Yeah, we worked with the apron because I wanted to pay homage and pay tribute to our working class. Uh, and they're the ones that really built our nation um, with their hard work and just to like highlight the Vincentia. Well, well, we use the national colors in the print. Um, so we used it on, on the apron itself. Uh, and I call it the Vinci Bush print. And so it incorporates uh, the banana and the breadfruit leaf. In response to the argument that the dress depicts a slavery mentality, Payne said persons should embrace their past, but at the same time not hold on to it, which is what his national wear design sought to depict. Very respectful. I think that has more to do with the mentality than it does with the with the clothing. I do understand that clothing has power, um, and definitely slavery is a huge part of our history, and there's definitely no denying that. So I'm not sure if it is that people are trying to run away from it so much um, as not to to like look at it and really understand what it is. It really requires you to study history, um, but also understand that it was a part of our history. Uh, there's no real shame in it. If anything, we should should just really own the power of having overcome it and have uh, been emancipated from it um, but uh, I, I get it but it's not it's definitely not what I intended um, and it's not what I see when I look at, at this dress yeah. yeah because it has a totally different meaning for you absolutely and I hope people understand it yeah that's fine I hope people understand it I'm not sure if they if they understood my in, my inspiration behind it but hopefully after after this interview they will for the national costume, Debbie Barber said that she wanted SVG to stand out from other Caribbean countries and her vision was one of royalty. The female culture wear, she said, has its own significance and meaning. The 40th year is a very important year for us as a nation and I wanted to make the dress like royalty basically. Um, I just love the vegetation here in St. Vincent, you know, our land, the sea, the sun and the beautiful beaches that we have. So predominantly the yellow for the sun really featured with our beloved breadfruit leaf. So I actually designed the breadfruit leaf and did a hand and stenciling on all the pieces to make it original because I wanted our dress to be different from any of the other islands. 100% cotton because I love the way the 100% cotton drapes to incorporate the waves and the rhythm and, and just basically all the vegetation that we have here. Baba also won the male costume and explained the idea behind the design. In shirt, it has a long sleeve with a little elasticated um, hem and it has a lovely um, white jabbo on it to again represent royalty and he wears a yellow 
The yellow gilet, which again is hand printed with the breadfruit leaf. And again, we've got three quarter pants. It can be made into long pants and it has a cuff on it with a little gold button. So that completes the, the men's costume. And of course, it's a delight that these two garments could represent St. Vincent and the Grenadines on the, on the world stage. Okay. Again, I would like to thank the beautiful Janelle Glasgow. She really worked that dress Friday night and Jaziel Lewis for modelling and, you know, making history in St. Vincent. Thank you.